Hi guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Let's talk about Real Raw. All right, so Real Raw is a process that exists in Silverfast's AI suite of software, which they actually call HDRI. Okay, HDRI, or Real Raw as I'm gonna call it, uh, allows you to capture all the image data to create the perfect basis for an archival file created from your film frame. All right, said simply, it just means that, that you can capture data that's comparable to the original analog media. So what Silverfast uh, HDRI Real Raw does is it creates this perfect archive. It's so perfect, in fact, that there there is no information that exists outside of the file. In other words, it's capturing your your negative as it exists and as we know negatives uh, you know after some years can start to fade or or you know deteriorate where that digital file of course will never do that it'll be exactly as you capture it so it's a good process to to you know get in the habit of and I'll, I'll tell you up front it's um the silver fast hdri capability it, it's it exists in the ai suite the ai the ai suite is not cheap Okay, it's it's around hovers around 400 bucks somewhere in there, but it's upgradable forever. It's something that you'll always be able to use as long as you're into film photography anyway, like I am. Advantages of scanning using the real raw method. Number one, it's a lot faster. Just like uh, in video, when you capture raw data, you know, even though the raw files in video are really huge, just like the these raw files are also really huge they're uncompressed so they move around your computer a lot quicker your computer can process them a lot quicker because the computer doesn't have to account for that uh you know that compression compressing and decompressing and and, and doing all that okay so you're capturing a raw file that's typically going to be about a you know for a 35 millimeter film frame about 120 140 megabytes uh, which is pretty big for a 35 millimeter film frame uh, but once you've captured that data, again, you've got everything. You literally can toss the film. And although it may sound like a little bit of a complex procedure, it's actually a great way to hand over a file to somebody who may not know anything about scanning and let them uh, manipulate it, do the color correcting or any, any uh, changes, cropping, what have you, that, that they may want to do. When you scan in this method, it's always perfect. You're never in fear of like blowing out the highlights, crushing the shadows, because you haven't made any adjustments. All you're doing is capturing that data, again, as it exists on that film frame. You're just digitally mastering that, that, uh, that raw film data and putting it on a digital file without any, any color correction, sharpening, no alterations whatsoever. If you spend any time on Lightroom or Photoshop or anything, it seems like every time you look at that photo, you, you always want to change it a little bit. It's like you look at it one day and it looks great. Then you look at it another day or a week later and it's like, uh, you know, I want to go towards this color hue now. The real raw process, you never have to worry about that because you haven't done any color changes. The uh, real raw process looks at your file, scans your file, captures red, green, and blue, captures the dust, captures the scratches, and then hands it over. Once you are ready to make any adjustments to that file, then you go grab that bucket, and then you uh, put it in the Silverfast HDR software. Now, HDR is a separate application, okay? You have your original scan that happens with uh, Silverfast um, scanning software that's connected to your scanner, and then the HDR software is not connected to anything because it does not manipulate hardware. What the HDR uh, software does is it captures that file that the scanning software created, the one with the RGB channels and the noise channel, and then it opens it up kind of like a, a virtual scanner, and it opens that file up. It allows you to make all your corrections, whether they be color corrections, whether it's sharpness or cropping even, you can make all those corrections at that point. Let's take a look at the Silverfast HDRI software and let's capture some real raw. All right, so to get started here, what you want to do is look at the uh, pull down and change it from probably what would be 48 to 24 bit down to the 64 bit HDRI raw. In this process, your scanner is completely encapsulating your film photo. 
It's taking your film frame, it's scanning the RGB data, but in addition to that, it's also scanning in the infrared channel, which holds all the dust and scratch information. It's the infrared channel that scans for dust to allow the scratch and dust removal to happen in a conventional scan. 32-bit HDR scanning carries out the same process for black and white negatives. It captures the grayscale information, and it also captures the scratch and dust information in the infrared channel. Black and white film that has a high content of silver halide will not work with the infrared channel. So you've got to use the conventional SRDX, which is software-based scratch and dust removal, versus the infrared-based scratch and dust removal because you get these crazy reflective artifacts when you use infrared light on a black and white film that contains silver halide. Another consideration is when you go to actually scan, just think of it this way, you're creating an archive. Uh, you cannot change the resolution at a later date. You can change all the color information because all that is captured in that raw TIFF file. Uh, but you can't change the size of it, so it would behoove you to go ahead and scan at the largest resolution that your scanner can handle, or at least know this uh, information going in. Now, I typically scan at around 3200 or even 2400 DPI, but you know it's up to you what resolution you use. Just kind of know going in that you can't increase it. You can certainly scan it at a lower resolution, scan in quotes, because when you go to the HDR software, uh, which is the, the virtual scanner later, but you can obviously produce a JPEG at a lower resolution as a final product. You can actually just type in the actual size that you want your image to be if uh, you don't want to rely on the framing, because what happens is the when the red lines that are showing the scanned surface of your image when you line those up around your film negative it gives you uh, an output size so you can go in and just directly type in and, and fine-tune what you want that output size to be uh, I always use TIFF you can use DNG I've, I've gotten in the habit of using TIFF uncompressed raw file it offers every bit of everything that exists on that film negative my files end up typically uh, in the 100 plus megabyte file size. So if you're paying attention, you'll notice that the controls, a lot of the controls that you use to enhance your image are grayed out. The uh, ultra sharp mass USM, the ISRD, infrared scratch and dust removal, the SRDX, which is your software based scratch and dust removal. Uh, for the aforementioned black and white film that, that can't take the infrared light. The other controls, if you look a little further down, the uh, AACO, which is the Auto Adaptive Contrast Optimization, if I'm remembering anyway, and Gain is your Grain and Noise Elimination Control. All these are grayed out because all of these adjustments will now happen in the Silverfast HDR software. You can, however, use multiple exposures and you notice when the little dot uh, appears, you're in uh, ME mode. So it'll take multiple samples of your photo to help increase dynamic range. And I've long been in the habit of using ME mode. So if you take a look down in the Negafix module, you'll see that um, using Fuji Superior Reala 100, and I always put the film negative data in there, so when you go to use the uh, HDR software, that information will also get passed over. Okay, so we've gone down all the controls. If you take a look at everything, uh, this is what your screen should look like. Again, the resolution is up to you. I'm at 4800 DPI. Don't worry about the uh, photo looking a little bit dark. It kind of looks like slide film where the, the dark colors are crushed, but this is just what happens when you enter the HDR mode. Your preview window goes dark like that, um, but that's nothing to worry about at all. All right, so I started the scanning process, and just to recap, what happens here, again, Silverfast is capturing all the data that exists on that piece of film that you put onto your scanner. The next step will be to take that data, that file, which will probably be about a 120, 150 megabyte TIFF file, 
you take that data or that file and then you open it up in the Silverfast HDR software. And the role of the HDR software is to act almost like a virtual scanner. You can hand this file to somebody that's got no knowledge of scanning, uh, have them open it up in the HDR software, and they can make all the adjustments to include scratch and dust removal, color, white balance. You know, all the buttons that are grayed out here uh, will be active in the Silverfast HDR software. So let's take a look at that. We'll skip ahead. If you look at the preview window, you can probably get a clue as to what you're about to see. Uh, so as the Silverfast AI Suite software finishes saving uh, and processing, what you're about to see is the real raw film negative as captured by the Silverfast HDR I software suite. There you have it. This is a film negative completely captured, completely encapsulated into a TIFF file, and it's what I call real raw. And I call it real raw because what you've got here is all of the film data, every bit of it, the color, the noise, the scratches, the dust, everything is there for you to be able to adjust and manipulate in the Silverfast HDR software. So what that does, think of it as a mini version of Photoshop that you can use to make all of your color adjustments after you've done your initial raw scan and have captured all of that data and encapsulated it into a file. So the next step in this process is for the HDR software to open that file. And if you'll notice, all the buttons now that were previously grayed out are now open for you to make your adjustments. White balance, ultra sharp mask, scratch and dust removal, everything is there. It's kind of like a virtual scan. Instead of scanning from an actual hardware scanner, you're scanning from the file. So what happened when you actually scanned this file into an HDR file, you created like a virtual scanner. When opened up in the HDR software, and after all your adjustments are made and so forth, you actually hit the uh, process button, which has a small icon of a scanner. So in fact, you're virtually scanning this file after making all your adjustments. And the power of this is that you start off with a file that hasn't been sharpened, hasn't had any adjustments made. It's a pure raw file, probably in the purest sense, a raw file that's archived and ready for you to open up in the HDR software and create whatever effect uh, it is you want to include resolution. Uh, the file was scanned at a 4800 DPI resolution, but there's nothing stopping you from creating a small scan uh, from the file, like for Insta or whatever social media you want to upload it to. And of course, you can scan, in quotes here, scan the file uh, up to 4800 DPI, creating the largest possible scan available to you since that's what the original scan resolution was and so you can of course make a smaller completed product but you can't increase the resolution of the original scan and now that we're in the HDR software you can see all the buttons are active and just like the original scanner software the little red dot shows you that that module is active so in order to see the effects that that module has on the photo, you hit the HQ button, HQ for high quality, which is a zoomed in of the effects that that module has on your photograph. In the case of scratch and dust removal, if you notice, there was quite a bit of dust in the uh, area of the sky above the building. And as I activated the HQ to see the effects, the scratches, and in this case, the dust are completely eliminated. When you're looking at the full view, you see the dust is there, and you've activated the scratch and dust removal, and this is just a way to confirm that the module actually worked. Anytime you're looking at the full preview, the full screen, not the zoomed in screen, you're not going to see the effects that, for example, the scratch and dust removal and the unsharp mask actually have on your photo. You have to hit the HQ button to see the, those effects take place. So don't be alarmed, like in the case of the scratch and dust removal, that you still see the scratches there. If you do the HQ preview, 
you'll see how well the module worked and you'll see if there's any remnants that didn't get eliminated and you can make your adjustments from there. All right, so I'm just gonna play around a little bit with some of the basic adjustments here, the contrast, uh, the mid-tones, just to give you an idea of how much latitude you've got, how much you can actually adjust these photos once they're in HDR. As I go through the adjustments on this photo, uh, you can see a lot of detail opening up in the shadows where the trees are and the bushes and all that. But the highlights in the clouds and the, the detail in those clouds is still very much intact. You've got quite a nice range of adjustments that you can make. I guess that's primarily due to the fact you're working with a TIFF file. And again, you've got full information off of that film negative. So there's not a whole lot that you can't do within reason, of course, to, uh, for your final adjustments. The global color correction, what that does is it gives you an overall hue or overall tone, whichever way you drag that slider. And that's a pretty powerful adjustment. There's a lot you can do with that. I'm just kind of playing around with it a little bit, but you can see how quickly it, it takes that photo from a summery, you know, a warm looking photo to like a, you know, wintry, cold looking photo and, and everything in between. Suffice it to say that there's a lot of power in these color adjustments, not just the global color correction, but if you look up top, the selective color correction, you literally can, can grab a color, sample a color in this photo, and completely change that to another color altogether. Even the curves here are broken down into individual colors. You can adjust for red, green, and blue to get really, really fine color adjustments. There really are some powerful tools in this software. So let's take a look at the Unsharp mask. Again, you click on the button. The module on the left side there is activated. You can see by the bar is highlighted. And you can use these preset adjustments. This is the preset more auto sharpness plus, which is pretty extreme, but just to show you what that looks like, you hit the HQ button, you wait for the pinwheel to stop as it applies that correction and you can see what it's gonna end up like in the finished product. Again, you're not gonna see the correction in place when you're looking at the full preview screen, but you'll see it when you hit the HQ button. And I'll go back and forth here a little bit, more auto sharpness, more auto sharpness plus. And since I'm already in the preview window, it shows me the, uh, the correction right away. The pipette, which is the white balance, allows you to pick a black, white, and gray point in your photo. You're basically telling the software in the photo what is pure white, what is pure black, and what is gray or a middle tone. I find that this adjustment isn't really necessary for a lot of the film that I use, especially daylight balanced film. It usually comes out pretty good, but uh, there's nothing wrong with trying it out just to see if it looks any better to you. Okay, so I think you guys get it by now. I've kind of gone over most of the adjustments that you can make. A lot of folks use the technique of like flattening their photo, kind of making it a little grayish, uh, uh, you know, lowering the contrast, lowering the saturation, and then opening up in Photoshop or Lightroom and making their final contrast and color adjustments there. But I like this software. It's pretty powerful. So I make all of my adjustments here and then I'm done. All right, so we hit the process button, and as you can see, it's got a little icon of a scanner because in effect, you're, you're creating a scan right now is what you're doing. Uh, so the scan happens pretty quickly because it's all software-based, and depending on the power of your computer, it can produce the image pretty quickly. I've created a JPEG here, and uh, if you see it, the same photo compared to a TIFF, and I kept the final scan at that same size, and the equivalent TIFF file with all the same adjustments, the color, the contrast adjustments, uh, pulling up the, the shadow detail, adjusting that how I want. I can just create a JPEG from that. I don't need to make an, yet another TIFF file at 126 megabytes and create yet another 47 megabyte TIFF file when you can just create the JPEG file with all the corrections and all the same quality as you would see in the TIFF if you were to create it. Uh, of course, the only difference being that the JPEG is nowhere near as adjustable for color and all that as the uh, TIFF file, but 
again, you don't need that because you've got the original TIFF file with way more information than the finalized TIFF. So let's take a look at the finalized product. So what we're looking at here, this is the TIFF file, the 47 megabyte file that was the end product with any color corrections, sharpness adjustments, scratch and dust removal corrections implemented. And if you look at these two files, since before they were generated, all that stuff was already done, uh, the JPEG and the TIFF files look pretty much the same. There's no appreciable difference really between the two. I'll make these two files available for you guys if you want to download them and play around with them on your own computer. But as I look at them, there's not really any difference uh, that I can see anyway. And again, this is because any adjustments were made before generating the final product. So you end up with two files that look the same because they've been graded and adjusted the same. I just want to show you real quickly what a whole roll of film looks like when you process it this way. You just grab all your shots, you put them on the virtual light table, and then you go to the job manager. And from the job manager, you can make all types of adjustment, flip, horizontal, vertical, so forth. You can make all your color adjustments. Uh, if you have a common adjustment that you need to make, like say, for example, since all these uh, shots are from a, the same camera and the same roll of film, there's probably some uh, adjustments that are going to be necessary for the entire roll. So in that case, you can make the adjustment to the first photo and then select down there at the bottom, apply to all. Like uh, in this case, I did an automatic image correction and then I did apply to all for all of them to have that common adjustment. So here I just select the file name and all that and start processing and, and all 37 of these will process in about two minutes or so. So I'll go ahead and skip ahead and get to the, uh, to the last one and show you the finished result. So what I've done is in, in a nutshell is created some image adjustments, applied those image adjustments to all the photos, sent them to a folder in JPEG format. And as you look at them, here they are. This is a 70 year old camera uh, that's yielding these wonderful results on modern film. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you do an entire roll. Right, so I hope you got something out of that. I enjoy this process. I've been doing this for a long time, um, probably close to about 10 years now. I've never talked about it. I haven't seen anything on YouTube that explains this process. So uh, hopefully this is a good uh, contribution to the, to the uh, uh, film photography space. And you folks out there that uh, have the Silverfast uh, AI suite can go ahead and try this out. Trust me, it is a huge time saver. These film frames get processed probably in about half the time as a as it would take for like a JPEG or something to be processed, you know, everything else being equal in terms of resolution and all that. Again, that being said, I, I typically scan at a higher resolution, so it might be kind of like a push in terms of how long it takes to scan. But for what you get, you get so much more data. You get these these big files that can be, you know, manipulated and changed and altered in, in, in any every which way. And it's, uh, it's a great process if you're really into film photography. So thanks again, guys, for stopping by. This is Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Go do some real raw.